This week in Video Game History. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Benjamin Humphreys, and welcome to another episode of This Week in Video Game History, a show that takes a bite-sized look into events related to video games and their storied past. Welp, we're headed back to the mid-2000s again. I mean, there was a lot going on during this golden period of video game enthusiasm, nerd culture explosion, and social media outbreak. Which, coincidentally enough, when you put the three of those together, you end up with a recipe for a hit television series waiting for the right time to be discovered. Or, in our case, a web series written by one person with a dream of creating something close to home that could not only satisfy her creative itch, but bring about a cultural release that has become beloved by millions. A beloved, but also well-written show that is steeped with reflective, awkward moments which bring about the inner acknowledgments of our own awkwardness. So without further ado, let's chat a little bit about the online comedy series called The Guild and its upcoming anniversary. On July 27, 2007, The Guild was dropped onto YouTube with a welcoming reception, one that would prove to be very important for the show's questionable future. More on that later. First, I would like to give a quick rundown about the show for anyone who isn't aware. The Guild was a web series that ran from 2007 to 2013, has six complete seasons with a total of 70 episodes. It was written and created by Felicia Day, who stars as Codex, the main focus of the show, alongside Sandeep Parikh as Zabu, Jeff Lewis as Vork, Amy Akuda as Tinkerbala, Robin Thorson as Clara, and Vince Casso as Blades. The premise revolves around the lives of these six gamers hopelessly addicted to an MMORPG who share a social space within the game as a guild called the Knights of Good. When certain unforeseeable events take place, that forces our misfits into meeting each other in person. Where their different personalities clash, hijinks ensue, boundaries are crossed and feelings are hurt, but all are likable in their own way, and are ultimately bound to one another through an unspoken bond they share as a group of barely sociable troglodytes. The show was and is incredibly charming, even if you can't necessarily relate to all of the video game jargon or related topics, mostly because of the way the characters and situations are written. You can still relate to a lot of the other themes and social interactions that are played out through each season, especially with the way they handle recapping everything as an insightful one-on-one with Codex at the start of each episode meant to be a sort of blog for her character to cope with everything that's going on. Despite all of that, the guild almost didn't make it past their third episode when they ran out of money, and had to rely on PayPal donations from fans in order to continue and finish the rest of the first season. A true testament to the show's popularity, which would be rectified for the second season and beyond, as it was picked up by Microsoft and premiered exclusively on Xbox Live Marketplace which is where I remember watching it for the first time. Zune Marketplace and MSN Video, then later for YouTube and their main website. It had countless awards and nominations for their writing, acting, directing, and was very much ahead of their time when you consider the meteoric popularity that followed with the vlogging trends of early 2010s along with the Big Bang Theory. But I think the guild still holds up outside of its niche and potentially dated terminology, which, in a way, makes it all the more endearing to me. So, the guild is kind of a product of its time, but a product that brought back so many memories of gaming culture during that time, at least for me while I was rewatching this. Things like the Jace Hall show, IGN and GamePro during their relevance, but also Xbox 360 gaming at its peak with the likes of Halo 3, Mass Effect 2, and The Witcher. I can distinctly remember recording in-game footage for Call of Duty Black Ops multiplayer, then editing it all within the software available on the 360 and sharing it with friends. However, 
It's the golden years of MMORPGs, and specifically World of Warcraft, that really hit home. Especially when I took a pause to piece together some of my memories of former guildmates or online friends that have splintered across the Dewey Decimal System of my recollections. I have some very clear and some very foggy images from that time. But there are names which I'll never forget. Rigor Morte, Porterhouse, Inbisco, Belial X, Troglobite, Strangled. Standouts from the mist of embattled moments that were molten core to on courage and everything in between. Our guild leader had made a website for us with forums where we would share photos and the like, not too different from what people use Discord for today. And there were always a few characters who fit the stereotypes to a T from the web series of basement dwelling creeps, as well as adjusted, albeit neurotic, personalities. But most of it didn't matter once you were in the game. Even to this day, and with the current guild I am in, a lot of things have stayed the same, but with minor changes as the overall age has trended upwards. A small social network of online individuals that are happy to share an interest with others and have a safe place to nerd out about the things they love. Which to me, is one of the things that stood out the most from the show during this rewatch. Because aside from Codex's journey, the guild and all of its members seems to be what the series is really about. Coming together when it matters, challenging one another, accepting their faults, and forming relationships with some of the weirdest people you will ever meet, and may otherwise have never met or given a chance in the first place. That's it for this week in video game history. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Benjamin Humphreys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Good night.